You know, we talk about conservation and environment. This shows what these individual farmers in their own right are doing. They're not waiting for government support. They, you know, are doing it themselves. Yeah, we've done a lot of tree planting and everything on the property. So just trying to do drop that salt table. So because one thing we knew we noticed with the um, with the drought and when it dried up that the salt was very high. So we've been slowly planting and encroaching down to that salty ground with, with trees and that's improving the ground a lot. It was meant to be a recreational sort of property but turned into a bit of a labour of love as well. Don't get me wrong, like the property was bought for harvesting ducks. There, there, is a, there is a bit of a community of hunters down here and it has sort of created this, you know, really good pockets of, of land that have been improved because of their love for hunting. So I can't see another organisation going to the work of spending the money that we're spending on these on these places to improve the to improve the properties. Open the gate, the carp will come in, close the gate, and then what happened is on a low water it'll reduce, the pelicans come in and then the pelicans just absolutely smash carp. This whole area, there's hunters all along this whole area managing the wetlands. We're at Toldroll Game Reserve which is a government operated reserve and out here we've got one of the newer bays and um, this got flooded um, from the channel that's in front of us and Chassa raised the money to put the pipes in. Yeah, these are extremely important wetlands um, because if those wader birds don't have this habitat to feed up and store up their energy, they won't be able to complete their migration and they won't complete their breeding cycle. So this is really important. So the knowledge has come from observation over, you know, being involved with duck shooting for, you know, 40 years. And also, you know, we, we listen to other people to, and their experiences and what they've tried to do, what's worked, what doesn't work. It's the will and the wanting to be conserve the area and also, you know, for hunting and for the environment. And that allows us, or that allows us to spend the extra money that we do to maintain our sport and the environment, which is one of the big key issues today is you can have the areas, but unless you have the management and the, and the financial wherewithal to produce the results that you're trying to achieve, it's very hard to get governments to do it off their own bat. Um, so I think you know, the hunting and the and recreation has to play its part in doing its bit and spending its money directly on the assets that it wants to utilise.